Welcome back to the Bronx Journal. My name is Raisa Pereira. The movie Gun Hill Road is the story of a Bronx family in transition. It shows a young man exploring his sexuality in an intolerant and judgmental world, and how his explorations impact on his relationships with his parents. A film by writer-director Rashad Ernesto Green, Gun Hill Road was a finalist for the Jury Award at the 2011 Sundance Film Festival and played at festivals globally in spring 2011. It is currently on DVD and also on Netflix. Rashad, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much, Raisa. So let's jump right into it. Um, how did you come up with the idea and the script for Gun Hill Road? It was inspired by a family member of mine uh, who had a child in transition. Uh, his child is transgender and I saw the family struggle for a period of about three years and we always see sort of one side of that struggle and I wanted to show the complexity um, and, and what a father and child go through together. Um, so have you always wanted to make films or was this something new? You know I fell in love with acting when I was about your age when I was in college um, and um, uh, I spent uh, three years in uh, a master's, getting a master's degree for acting and when I got out into the real world I realized that there weren't a lot of roles um, that explored the complexity and, and explored my culture the way I wanted it to be represented on screen. So instead of getting upset and getting frustrated I decided to go back to school for film uh, to, to make, uh, to write and direct the stories that I wish to see. Um, so I read on MiyamaFilms.com. Mm -hmm. um, this was your, fir your, feature, your first feature in thesis film, right? That's right, yeah. Um, did you think it would have so much success being your first project? Well, I mean, I always hope for the best, you know. Um, so, you know, but I didn't, I didn't necessarily know how far it would go. I, I didn't know that we would get into Sundance. I was hopeful, of course. Uh, I had a short that had played at Sundance previously. Um, but uh, yeah, for the first first time out, you know, it did go pretty far, and and I was we were really happy about it. Um, so tell us how Mi Alma Films came to be. Uh, Mi Alma Films is uh, just uh, the name that I gave my first production company. Um, but uh, right now, uh, my brother's in in film school um, right now, and we have our uh, our second production company called Green Brother Films. So. Cool. Yeah. Um, was the setting always planned to take place in the Bronx for Gun Hill Road? Uh, absolutely, yeah. My, my family's from the Bronx, um, uh, born and raised, so um, yeah, the, the family that uh, the story's inspired by also uh, grew up in the Bronx, so I wanted to keep it pretty true to the, to the actual occurrence. Um, did you cr uh, come across any obstacles for casting or filming the movie? Well, um, the one of the lead characters, uh, the transgender child, uh, it was very difficult to find her because um, I didn't um, s expect that I would find her through the traditional forms of casting, um, um, through auditioning. Um, because there aren't very many actors that can pull that kind of role off, so I wanted to find sort of you know the real deal somebody who, whose life experience was as close to the character as possible. So that meant I had to hit the streets of New York um, and I looked for months um, and I finally found someone um, who was transitioning um, at the time. Uh, her name is Harmony and um, she I think delivered a wonderful performance. Um, can you tell me how did you prepare for the role? Uh, sure. Um, I, I set her up with an acting coach um, and uh, I rehearsed with her for a number of weeks before production um, actually came about. Um, so by the time we actually had those cameras rolling, she was very comfortable and I, I had to worry about everybody else. <laughs> um, so Isai Morales and Judy Reyes are two, um, two of the stars in the film. Mm -hmm. um, is it difficult to get established actors for independent films? You might think so. I mean, um, it usually comes down to, to not having enough money. Um, but w in our case, we we had, uh, you know, a, a little bit of money in the bank and we knew when we wanted to shoot the film. Um, so we went after Isai and, and Judy um, and with the gamble that you know, perhaps this might be something that they that they'd be interested in. There's not every day that they get a script that 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 um, gets to explore this side of Latino life in this way, and uh, they jumped all over it. Cool, that's good. Um, so, what is the process like getting a film into the festivals uh, and promoting it? Also, sure. Well, you know, I I guess 
you have to make it first, of course, and uh, um, after you fini finish the editing process, um, in our case, we weren't even picture locked when, when we did submit, um, but you know, we, you, you um, because you're always fighting a deadline. Right. Um, so we got it to as good a place as we could, and then you know, sent it off and, and prayed, and, and, and d during that time we were still editing uh, the film, but then we got a call um, that, that we had gotten in, um, and we were just trying to finish it, finish it all up, do the, the, you know, the color, the sound, uh, and get it ready for audiences in January. Cool, and how did you guys go about funding for the film? Well, a number uh, of my sh shorts had done well previously. Uh, one had uh, gone to Sundance, a couple had ended up on HBO. Um, so I, uh, I um, kind of had my name out there a little bit. So I had an uh, investor slash producer friend of mine approach me and ask me what I was doing next. And I had the, the script for the film. Um, and uh, he said he, he really liked it and let's do it. That's great. Um, did you worry the topic of the film would stop people from funding, helping you fund the film? Sure, I mean, and I still, I still uh, worry about, you know, it might prevent people from watching it. Um, but, you know, to me it was never uh, a film, um, a, an LGBT film necessarily. It, to me it's a, a film about a family, right. a Bronx family like all, you know, like, like all of us know. Um, you know, it could happen to anybody, and I guess that was c kind of my, my point in making it, is that this could be you, and what would you do? You know, if your child um, chose to take a different direction for their life than you wanted them to, or, or would you love them? Would you embrace them still? Or, you know, what, what, what would you do? So um, that was that. That was my hope with the film, and and I and I hope that people can still check it out on Netflix and um, and identify with it and relate to it. Right. Um, so many Latinos, or I guess many people in general, are not very comfortable with the LGBT community still. Right. Right. LGBT. Um, did you think people might not support it when they heard of it or saw the trailer? Right. Right. But that you know that's kind of the the point of the film was that. Um, you know, we we have these stories in our community. You know, whether we want to admit to it or not, um, the you know the reality of the situation is it's a problem. Um, it's it's a problem that we don't know what to do or how to cope with situations like this when they do arise. Sometimes we kick our loved ones out of our family because we don't agree with their lifestyle choices uh, or we don't talk about it, we sweep these issues under the rug um, when we should be, you know, we, we should be loving our, our children and, and, and helping them and listening to them even if we don't necessarily agree with them. Um, so that's why I made the film. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with pushing the envelope, you know. Um, so I, I, I hope that I presented it in such a way um, with with credible actors um, and that that people were moved by the story, whether or not it's the type of such subject, subject matter that they're um, always attracted to. Right. What do you think are the biggest obstacles for Latino or, or minority filmmakers? The biggest obstacles, I guess, the biggest obstacles for minority filmmakers would be the same as any other filmmaker, which is which is money you know, the money and time to be able to do the projects. Um, but uh, as technology improves and uh, the prices of cameras and uh, come down, you know, people are able to, to, uh, to do it for, for, for less at this point. So, um, you know, I just, I, you know, I encourage people to, to not be afraid and just sit down, write that script, do what it takes and, and, and get your movie made. So do you have any new works in progress? Well, right now I'm, I'm delving into TV a bit more. I just got back from uh, the West Coast where I was away for a couple months uh, doing an NBC director's program um, where it, the, the hope is that I'll get to direct an episode of one of the television sh shows uh, next season. Um, I'm also writing um, a pilot uh, as well that, that uh, also takes place in the Bronx. Um, so we'll see what happens. Cool. And do you think there'll be a Gun Hill Road Part Two? Or Gun Hill Road Part Two, probably <laughs> not. But um, you'll definitely see, see re reiterations of my family in some way or another on the screen in the future. 
Okay. Um, do you have any advice for student or aspiring filmmakers? Anything else you'd like to say? Absolutely. I would say I would say don't wait. I would say if you have an idea or if you're passionate about something, start today, start now, and don't let anything get in your way. Start writing, and uh, you know the the pen is a very very powerful tool, and never forget that. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for being here with us. Hey, thank you so much for having me. And how can people get a hold of you if they would like to contact you? You can always uh, get a hold of me through the website, uh, gunhillroad.com. Um, we also have a Facebook page, Rashad Ernesto Green is uh, my name. And it's easily, you can just type that in on Facebook and, and reach me very easily. And where else can you see the film also? Um, well, we have it on Netflix. We have it on iTunes. You can order a DVD from Amazon. Um, there are yeah, a couple, couple different uh, venues that you can check it out on. Okay, cool. Rashad, thank you again for being here with us today. And thank you so much for having me. And we'll be right back with more of the Bronx Journal.